remember my mom coming out of a screening and with tears in her eyes going, oh baby, baby. <laughs> like, no mom, I'm just acting, it didn't really happen to me. Nice ducky. Me, Phil. You, Howard. We be friends. Ugh. To be honest, you know, I think there's a lot of charming things about that film. I think the costume of the duck could have been a little more in keeping with the original artist's concept that drew that comic book. Personally, I would have liked to have seen that gruff, cigar chomping, smoking, alien from another planet, rude, inappropriate. That's the movie I would have liked to have seen. This was a great job for me at the time because George Lucas had just done Star Wars and it was a lot of money and it was on location and it was, I think it was the first film the Marvel Universe did. So it was, on paper, felt really great. Your dad's here? Where's he at? It's right behind home plate, don't look, don't look. I always imagined the sequel, if there was a sequel, that Nuke would be done and he'd be uh, signing autographs to, you know, at some convention to <laughs> get some money. In the sequel that I dreamed up, he comes back with the knuckleball. It's the only thing he can throw and learns how to throw a sick knuckleball that brings him back into the majors, but whatever. Actually, I have a uniform in the Baseball Hall of Fame. My nuke uniform is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. has been for years. I'm very proud of that. There was some ice in there, but most of it was uh, this plastic ice, so that's acting. I think you would actually put an actor into hypothermia if you put him in that much ice, but it was tough. It was a tough shoot. And at the time, my family was, uh, my kids were in St. Louis, so I would go on the weekends just to see them on Saturday, fly back Sunday night, start working on Monday. It was exhausting, but I felt like there was something visionary about Bruce Joel Rubin's script. You know, it came out at exactly the wrong time, which was a month before we were about to go to a real war in Iraq. The environment, the zeitgeist, whatever, at the time just wasn't ready for it. The great thing about a lot of these movies is what really gives them their merit is time. Who plays the sun? No, 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 suns, large solar discs. Listen, you gotta run this idea by Bonnie Sherman. Pictures they make these days are all in TV. Cut, 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 cut. The opening shot. It was a day of rehearsal of that opening shot on the player. He took his time, he, he uh, wanted to do it right. And the other thing he told us, which is typical Altman, listen, we know where the camera's gonna be. We have no idea what you're gonna say. And it's up to you. It's really exciting to do filmmaking like that, you know? An eight minute take, and it's, it, there's no coverage, and, and you just gotta get it right. And everybody has to just click. And, and so what you're looking for is magic. And when you have people that believe that you can do that, and have the trust in you to pull that off, it's an awesome environment to work in. I got to work with one of my heroes, Robert Altman, and I learned so much from him, observing him on how to direct a film and how to run that kind of complicated ship. So right after that, right after the player in the, the fall after we shot that, I shot Bob Roberts, my first film. I've asked you a question and you have evaded it. I have evaded nothing. You have asked an incredibly slanted question based on lies and conjecture, and I have responded with an answer appropriate to that kind of yellow journal. And that I wanted to make a film that follows a candidate uh, and who is hiding a lot of things. But his image is so charming and, and uh, American that no one really looks very deeply into who he really is. This is my son, Roger. Hi, Roger. And his two sir. friends, we got all the, and Kevin. Both oh. album. Hi. Hi. Jack Black's first film, he was incredible in it. Uh, clearly a psychotic uh, fan of, of Bob Roberts. Um, <laughs> It's, it holds a special uh, place in my heart, uh, and I'm real proud of it, and I'm proud that it continues to work and is actually, uh, you know, really where we are 
now. It's fun, it's healthy, it's good exercise. The kids will just love it, and we put a little sand inside to make the experience more pleasant. Hula hoops are, are really hard. Not to mention, to remember a whole speech and hula hoop at the same time. That was like my deep training on that movie. Like, I was worried so much about that scene. That was the, that was the scene I was just terrified of. I, I worked on it every day, I couldn't get it. And then I talked to my hula hoop teacher. I said, is there anything we can do to help me? And he said, yeah, we could add some weight into it. And that's what eventually I was able to uh, figure out. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living, or get busy dying. Shawshank, for me, I find it really inspiring. A movie that was essentially ignored by audiences when it first came out became such a popular film. Talk about second chances. I'm in a film that is considered by many to be their favorite film ever. And that is uh, so rare and I feel so blessed. I have on my, in my office, I have a, a jar of rocks from that yard that the extras gave me that I truly value that, that possession. Wherever I go throughout the world, uh, people stop me and, and thank me for that film. And they thank me because it, it touched something in them and it changed something in them. The fact that that film is so successful also gives me great hope for us making a difference in reforming the criminal justice system. What do you really want to know? Am I sorry for what I did? Well, I am. As not a day goes by, I don't feel regret. I have really fond memories of that experience with Morgan Freeman. We would have, you know, nice barbecues over at one of our houses and, you know, just discovered rural Ohio. And a great bond between myself and Morgan that has lasted over the years. Uh, I always respected him as an actor. And, you know, as a child, I seen him in an electric company, so I was like, dude, you don't know how good that was. He says, yes, I do. I went off. I bashed his head on the parking lot. There's blood everywhere. I might have killed him. Most of what, of what you see in Mystic River is the first take because Clint Eastwood only did one take of most of the scenes we did. On rare occasion, a second take would be allowed. When you know the rules going in, you show up ready to work. So every day we would, and because of this, we also worked between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day. And usually films go 12 to 14 hours. All the actors were staying in the same hotel and we would gather to rehearse the next day to make sure that our accents were on point. I loved it. I loved that uh, discipline. I loved that uh, that confidence too. Oh, I get it. You're the good cop. How about a meatball sub while you're at it? 